Hey everyone, it's producer Jake. If you're hearing this, you're listening to a free preview of our special episode. To hear the whole special and all our bonus content, including additional interviews and mini episodes, just go to our Substack, AmericanPrestigePod.com. Thanks. They seem to have a mostly symbolic power. Uh, uh, my understanding is there's also significant economic power in terms of tourism, right? And like, how much are they actually paid, and how much do they bring in? And and in some sense, why does this country still have a monarchy? For, to an American perspective, um, that might seem a bit strange. Yeah, I think there's a couple different things to unpack there. I think the, I mean, I don't know exact financials, but in terms of working the tourism and heritage industry, it's a massive draw to the country. Um, Anybody that visits, they're going to go see Buckingham Palace. They're going to see the changing of the guard. There is that feeling that for some reason with the British royal family that you don't quite get when you're in Denmark or in Monaco, that you feel that you that there's some kind of stronger connection there to the past. Um, you know, lots of other countries do have royal families, but Britain has certainly been able to capitalize, on, <laughs> capitalize on it in a way that other countries haven't quite for one reason or another. Um, part of that we can get into. Um, I think it has to do with the family itself, that they kind of are just like us. They've got their foibles, they've got their ups, their downs. They're not a perfect family. Um, as much as things are kind of meant to be kept behind closed doors, they aren't in fact. Um, and we know a lot more about them than we do, for instance, the Japanese royal family, who are certainly very closed with their actions and activities. So I think that plays a part in it. But certainly the economy of Britain has a lot to do with the royal family. Yes, they do collect state funds, but they are also bringing in a lot of money. Um, the royal collection, uh, which I worked for, um, is one of the arms of the family, I guess, that was, is making money, um, supporting to try and help support themselves. The Duchy of Cornwall is also a great money maker um, for whoever the Prince of Wales is. So now for uh, William and for Kate. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different income streams that they have. I mean, we could even go into all of them if we wanted to, but um, yeah, they're not just dependent on the taxpayer bill by any stretch of the imagination. Question. They still get money from the taxpayers, though. Do, do every British citizen pays this family. I mean, it's not like when you get your taxes taken out, you're like, oh, there's my dollar that I'm giving to the queen today. Um, it's something that's kind of more jumbled in with uh, other taxes. And taxation is very different in Britain than it is here. Um, it's calibrated on your income levels, but it's uh, the income levels are higher than they are here. And of course, you're getting the National Health Service out of that and a lot of other benefits that we don't get in the United States. So it's a little bit apples and oranges for a comparison. But but they get taxpayer money. They do get absolutely. They do get yeah. taxpayer money, and, but they're also generating funds as well. And the, the funds they generate are from inherited properties they get by virtue of being born into this royal family. Well, yes and no, right? Because you've got the whole royal collection that's functioning, right? So you've got the Queen's Gallery, you've got the Muse, you've got the state opening, all these things that they do and they're participating in that are also generating revenue, which then they have employees that are getting paid and all the people that work for them are not landed gentry. Many of us are immigrants to the country. Um, so I, I think there's there's a lot of different things at play throughout the nation um, that are part of the financial kind of overview of it. Is there um, a strong anti-monarchist tradition in England now, or is that pretty fringe? Uh, do people point out domestically that it's ridiculous that there's a royal family, or is that like not really a mainstream position at this point? But most of the the, the sort of consensus in the country is we, we like these people, we want them here. Well, I mean, I think it's like with anything, right? Like everybody has their own opinion and we all have friends that have same opinions as us, different opinions of us. Some of us have opinions that are kind of dependent on certain moments in time or certain issues and other issues. So I don't think you can really say that it's like, oh, everybody's thinking one thing or everybody's thinking another. I think that right now the sentiment is, wow, this woman gave up, you know, like her whole life was spent being dedicated to this country. She did what she was supposed to do up until two days before. I mean, how many people work till they're 96 years old? Um, but then obviously there are many people across the globe, the empire, who, um, you know, the, the, 
Britain itself, the, the British East India Company, you know, a joint stock company, has done irreparable damage throughout the world. So I think, you know, you got to kind of divide the two, right? There's like this queen who just died. And then there's like the idea of hierarchy and people being better than each other. There's the idea of people being born into...